Diagnosing and troubleshooting a turbo on your Duramax diesel. It's coming up. For those of you new to the channel, I'm Anton, a power engineer, industrial mechanic, and a Red Seal electrician. We cover all kinds of products and topics in an approachable way for the average everyday person. I'm glad you found us. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. So today we've got a 2007 GMC Sierra. This is a 2500 HD with the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel. Now we have a suspected turbo issue and I've searched all over the internet to try and find the definitive source of troubleshooting and I can't seem to find it. So here we are making one ourselves. Now one thing I wanna be clear on right away is that this is not gonna be fixing the problem. Today we are just us doing diagnostics. So I'm going to walk you through exactly what I'm going to check to make sure that it's not something simple, something cheap, something easy that you could fix for yourself at home. If it's a bigger job like a turbo, you might not want to do it yourself, but it might be worthwhile knowing if that's what the next step is. So I'm going to walk you through exactly the symptoms that I'm having. I'm going to show you, you're going to listen to it, and then I'll show you exactly how we're going to troubleshoot and diagnose if it's a sensor and or an actuator and or a turbo. Now one thing I should point out is we are going to be using some diagnostic tools and so for part of this test I'm going to assume that you have some sort of a diagnostic tool. I'll tell you when we get there but this is not going to be using just basic tools. We want to be sure that we've got the right problem here so we have to use the right tools to test that. So let's start by telling you the problems that we we're having that made me think that I had a problem in the first place. Number one, when towing the truck was experiencing high coolant temperatures. So it was only when it was fully loaded with towing. So under normal driving circumstances, it seemed just fine. When I stepped on the gas, it seemed to accelerate okay. Everything seemed to be running just fine. But as soon as I hooked up an 8,000 pound camper trailer and went up a hill, all of a sudden my coolant temperature was rising. If I could keep my revs below about 1500 RPM, then my coolant temperature was just fine. It would maintain and manage just fine. As soon as I dropped into a higher gear, give it a little bit more throttle, the exhaust temperatures would rise. The other thing that I was experiencing is a trouble code. Now my trouble code is P003A. Now many of you guys are getting two trouble codes, which would be the P003A, but you could also be seeing P2563. Now I am not seeing that code code myself at all. I've scanned it, I've checked it, it does not come in. So I have just the 003A code. That could be significant as we get on to the troubleshooting and diagnostics. Other thing I noticed is when it's idling, the exhaust goes between a hissing sound and a rumbling sound, which makes me think that that's not normal. Most people would have a hissing all the time or a rumbling all the time, and that would depend on if you had the truck tuned. Now, supposedly my truck was tuned because it has the DPF delete, which would have required tuning as well. So I don't know if that is relevant or significant because possibly the tune goes back and forth between a rumble and a hiss because it's not a very good tune. That's possible, but it could also be a symptom of the problem. I will show you guys the sound right now. So now that we understand what my problem is, you can decide if this is the same kind of problem that you've had. The next thing we gotta do is go and look under the hood to see what the different causes for that problem can be. Good. Now under the engine, there's gonna be two things that we're gonna be looking for here. One is a sensor over on this side of the turbo, and one is an actuator over on this side of the turbo. And what we're gonna do is just see if we can pull the sensor out and test if the sensor is actually working. And then we'll do some current readings on the actual actuator to see if that's the problem. Now the first thing we wanna do is come up over on this side. This is the driver's side of the engine, and there's a sensor right there. You guys can see that guy right there? That is 
your vein position sensor. Now the wire for it, this is the wire right here. The wire comes underneath the intake tube and goes to a connector right there. So we're going to leave it connected, but we want to remove it from the side of the turbo right there. And to do that, I'm gonna use a one inch wrench and just put it on there. We should be able to turn it and get it loose and then just spin it out by hand. Now, it is plugged back in and this is the sensor. Now this sensor checks the vein position ring to make sure that it's where you think it should be. Now there's a little plunger right here and this plunger just goes in and out. Now, we wanna do a physical test first and that is to just squeeze it and see if it goes in and out without any resistance and it does which is excellent for the sensor, but it's bad for me because I was kind of hoping that this sensor was broken and that that was my problem. So it's nice and smooth, goes in and out easy. The reason you see me letting go of it so quickly is because I was filming a YouTube video and letting the truck run to try and show you guys my symptoms. And this engine is very, very hot. So obviously this is hot. So I'm trying to not burn myself while I show you guys, but you can see goes in and out with no issues. So the next thing that we want to do is actually connect our scanner and see what kind of feedback we get from the sensor through the computer. So this is the first thing that you're gonna have to spend a little bit of money on. Let's take a look at the scanner we're using. Now this is it here. This is an Autel Maxidas DS808. Now I bought this scanner a lot of years ago when I bought my Mercedes. Cause if you've seen my other videos, you know that only idiots or millionaires buy a Mercedes and I am neither. So I thought, well, what if I just have all the tools that the technician would use to diagnose my Mercedes, then maybe I can save a little bit of money. This tool has been invaluable in keeping that Mercedes running and it will be invaluable to you here today. Now, this one is extreme. It's expensive. You do not need one as expensive as this. If you would like one that is not as expensive, but we'll still do the test that we're going to do here today, I will put a link in the description to one like this, but also one that's a cost effective option. It's still going to cost you a few hundred dollars and a regular OBD2 scanner will not do what we're going to be doing here today. So you need one that has full two-way communication, which is more of like a dealer level scanner, but I will link you guys to one of the cheapest ones you can get that will still do what we're doing or if you want to invest a little bit in yourselves you can get a scanner similar to what I've got here which does so much more but we're gonna start the truck and then we're going to turn this on and we're going to connect to my truck and now I'm gonna tell it to automatically select my truck reading of in. Now, once you get connected to your vehicle, you will not have all the same options unless you bought the same scanner as me. So I'm going to go into diagnostics. I'm going to go into control unit and I'm looking for engine control module, active test, and then I'm going to go to TC vein position sensor. That's the sensor that we just removed from the truck. Now, the sensor right now is reading 4.84 volts, and it says the TC vein position is at 100%. All I'm gonna do is go and move that plunger in and out, and I'm watching for this to move at variable rate. Okay, so I've got the sensor here, I've got my tool, and all I'm doing is pushing it. You can see how little you need to move it, and it'll change. So it says it's at 100% right now. See how it's dropping down now? 80, 70, 40, 50. It's very sensitive. You don't need to move it a lot. 25 and all the way to zero when it's held in. So I can let it out to 100, push it into zero. Now, I'm gonna push it a little bit slow and what I'm looking for is, is there any point on this readout where it uh, actually jumps up or down a lot. So you wanna try and do it smooth and just watch it go. So this is very, very linear and I have no indication that this sensor is bad, none at all. So now I believe that that sensor is okay. Now here's the first mistake that a lot of people make. They assume that the sensor is the problem because the veins are not reading in the correct position. And that's highly possible. But the next mistake that people make is the sensor is pretty inexpensive, especially if you get it on Amazon. Now there are a lot of people 
people who have reported putting in an Amazon sensor and then finding that they had the problem still and they went back and forth and back and forth and they actually put in a sensor that was not as good quality and so they saved a little bit of dollars but they actually made a two-part problem. The original problem was still there but now the vein position sensor wasn't working correctly either. So now that we know the sensor is working, I've just saved about $200. So the price of the scanner was just saved by not having to buy that sensor. So I'm gonna put the sensor back where it belongs and then we're gonna move on to the next part. Now we've got the sensor back in. We've rerouted the wiring exactly how it's supposed to go and we've plugged it in there. The one thing I wanna show you guys before we move on is right here back on the screen. So our TC vein position says that it's actually at 91. Now, 91's not normal right now, so this is our first indicator using a scan tool that something might not be right. So now I wanna show you guys something that we can check inside just to try and help confirm some of our suspicions. Now we are gonna have to start the truck for this. So we'll start the truck up. We need to get some oil pressure for this next check. And now, on this same test that we were just on, you'll notice I have an increase and decrease button. So currently, it has no commanded state. If I go increase, it's saying we want to open it 5%. Now, I know it's already at 88%. I was expecting it to be at zero, but it's not. So I'm gonna go up in incremental percentages. So now we're asking for 55%. It says it's still at 88%. Now, because we tested the sensor, I know that this sensor is reading correctly. Before I did the test, I did not know that. So now I know that it's reading correctly. So what I'm hoping for is once I get past where it seems to be stuck, that I'll maybe see it open bigger. So now I've said commanded state 100%. Now I'm still seeing 88% and that is with the oil pressure required to actually move those veins. So this tells me something new. This tells me the veins are not moving. But what it doesn't do is tell me why they aren't moving. So just because they're not moving doesn't mean they're stuck. Now a lot of people are watching this video saying, yeah, veins are stuck. Everybody knows the veins get stuck. It's the veins are stuck. Problem with that analogy is is stuck veins means pulling the turbo apart and trying to clean them and or removing the turbo and then paying a lot of dollars to replace it. And that's why we're gonna do one more check and that is to check the actual vein position actuator. So I'm gonna go to the other side of the truck and we're gonna do some tests on that. Now our vein actuator is on the passenger side of the engine. I'm gonna see if I can get a shot of it here. There it is right there right in between the intake here where we've got the intake hose there to the intake there do you see that cylindrical thing i can't even get my hand in there to point at it for you guys this is going to be fun for testing it's got that connector on there right there that is it now what we want to do is get that connector unplugged so we've got the connector off now you could remove this hose if you wanted to to give yourself much better access but i don't think i need that much better access for what i'm trying to do here okay there is no way i'm going to have the access i need to show you guys what I'm doing so I am gonna remove this hose if you can reach in there you can skip this step if you can't then remove the hose too so we've got the intake tube off I've only taken this section off I've taken the top piece off too not because I had to but it might make it easier so now you can see that sensor a lot better in there right there if I hold the camera right there, you can see right here is the connector that I just removed and what I need to do is meter the connections on that connector. So now we're into the second tool that you might have to buy if you don't own it. This is a digital multimeter. Now, I have one, but mine is lost, and so this is my new one. So this is very inexpensive on Amazon. It'll do a lot of functions for you, including testing sensors and stuff like that. So I'm gonna pull this out, and I'm gonna show you what we're doing next. Now this next step is gonna be hard to get on camera, but I've got my meter set up to the 200 ohms setting. Now we wanna make sure that our meter is reading, so all I do is just touch the connections together 
together and you should see roughly zero ohms. In this case, I'm seeing 0.4 ohms, that's okay. Now the next thing we need to do is to shove these leads into the connector hole of the sensor. Now there is absolutely no way that I'm gonna be able to show this to you guys, but I've got these leads and I'm shoving them both in there to connect to the two pins that are inside there. And I'm not even gonna be able to get you guys a shot of what those two pins look like. But, where's that? This here is the connector that was plugged in there. So it gives you an idea of how close the pins are together. And we want to just meter between those two pins. What we want is between 3.4 and 5 ohms reading on here when we're measuring the resistance of the coil on that actuator. So there we go, we've got the reading. We're about 4.5 ohms. And that is exactly what we expected to read. So the problem is not the electrical in the actuator. Now, what have we learned? Okay, first thing we did was made sure that the computer is sensing a change in the vein position. We did that by checking that that position sensor worked and we validated not only that it works, but that the computer sees it working. So we know that's okay. We've also tested that the actuator itself is connected physically inside the coil so that if it did get some power, it would try to actuate and or move those adjustable veins. We've also tested that the computer is sending a signal to adjust the veins. So all three conditions have been met for this to actually work. The only thing that's not happening is the veins aren't actually moving. The fact that they aren't moving means that we are on to the expensive repair which means we either pull part of the turbo apart and try to perform a clean operation on it or we replace the whole turbo. Now in my case, I'm going to replace the turbo mostly because I use this truck for long road trips and the last thing I want is to get a stuck turbo vein somewhere down the side of the highway where I don't have access to tools to fix the problem properly. So we're gonna spend a little bit of extra money, get a rebuilt turbo and throw that thing on there. Hopefully that helps you guys out to understand at least how to diagnose it before you go and spend all the money on an expensive repair. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.